Hey boys, so in today's video we're going to be continuing to disassemble the M20. So now that it's out from the car, we're going to need to remove the transmission and uh, try to start taking some measurements to see how it will fit on the VR6. Because uh, I just want to tell you guys, from I've been looking for over two years, try to find another person who put a VR6 in the E30 and I couldn't find one so not a lot of information I do know that the Jetrag BMW transmission can be mounted to a VR6 engine so that should work but still a lot of measurements a custom adapter plate to be fabricated and then uh, engine mounts and all the rest that goes with it the oil pan and as you can see on the M20 engine the oil pan is pretty much only on the front of the engine on the rear of the engine you're pretty much flush with the crank so that's another thing that's going to be need to be looked into for the VR6 um, either going to be doing a custom oil pan or other solution might be to go with the dry sump so We'll have to see once we're there. So for now, I'm just going to be removing the transmission. Uh, I can't wait to see what clutch is in there because this E30 used to be a track car. So I'm hoping that there's already a single mass flywheel in there and a good enough clutch that I could at least reuse for now until I go turbo on the VR6. So uh, let's start taking this out. Okay, so now the train is out. So now for the fun part. It's time to take all the measurements and see if we can fit that Jetrag BMW transmission onto that VW VR6. This is a 2.8 12 valve uh, base engine, easiest one to prototype on. Uh, the project is going to start with this uh, base. VR6 and then we can uh, upgrade from there so as you can see so what I need to do exactly is to measure all the positioning of all the fixation holes uh, to install the transmission on the engine and then do the exact same thing on all the mounting holes that are on the rear of the VX VR6 engine So with all the holes on the VR6 and the bell housing, I just drew up a little mock-up plate uh, combining the two bolt patterns. And I'm just going to cut that out out of uh, sheet metal on my plasma table. So I'm just finishing up the program and now we can put it on the table and get it cut out. So here is my plate that I just cut out from a thin sheet of sheet metal just to uh, figure out if my measurements are correct. So if we have it here, first on the engine, let's see if this works.
put it on the dowel pins here. That fits pretty good. So that's pretty good. Then on the transmission. Like this. I have another extra holes that I'm missing down here. But other than that should be good. Now that I confirmed that all my uh, hole positionings are good, I'm going to be cutting uh, out of quarter inch steel, uh, same type of mock-up adapter plate, but in two separate pieces, uh, so I can use a piece of flat bar instead of wasting a whole sheet. So these will be cut out and then installed on the engine and on the transmission. Okay. So I got these cut out uh, on my plasma table. So these are actually just going to be for mock-up. So instead of having the adapter plate machined right away, I wanted to make a little mock-up plate so I can confirm all my measurements are good. Uh, so it's pretty simple. I just have two steps of quarter inch uh, steel plate that I'm going to space out with some little quarter inch uh, plates that I did. Uh, in total, I want to have an inch and a half of adapter plate, so that's going to uh, help me clear the rear timing chain cover. So I'm going to have one plate that's going to be bolted to the transmission, one plate bolted to the engine, and they're going to be joined by these spacers. So I'll have one set on the bottom half, and then one set on the top half here, like this. So this will give me my correct offset, uh, so that way I can put the engine with the trans in the car and then measure up for the motor mounts. Uh, so I'm going to assemble these, assemble it to the transmission here. Uh, so if you look, this part actually goes like this. So I'm using a couple of the mounting holes uh, on the transmission and same thing like this, so I have here, 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 and the dowel pin hole here that's a little bit oversized, uh, and then all the other holes are for the VR6 engine. And then I have the second part here uh, that goes like this. So this hole is not used because it goes in the timing cover. And then I'm using this mounting hole here and these ones on the bottom. So I'll get these assembled. Transmission is on, so she's all mounted up, so you see that's the inch and a half spacing that I need to clear the timing belt cover that is here, so you can see right here, so that's my inch and a half, and I don't know, I don't think we can really see in there, but seems to uh, be pretty aligned. I'm gonna have to recheck it when I do my machine one but at least the input shaft and the crank are perfectly aligned by eye at least so for now that's good. So now I set it up so the engine and transmission are straight so once I put it in the car then I can see if I need to give it a little bit of angle to fit with the subframe so next step we're gonna get the car in and let's 
put this bad boy in the engine bay. Okay guys, so she is finally in for mock-up. So, of course, as you can see, oil pan's gonna need some cutting because I'm pretty much touching the subframe right now. Um, back and forth, I have about three inches uh, to go so I can get the OEM transmission location. I can't right now because of my ghetto uh, engine hoist setup so what I think I'm gonna do is actually use the studs for the intake and exhaust manifolds and probably put the brackets on each side so that way I can take all the room on the back and really push it the three inches it's missing if we go on the other side here uh, we can really see what we need to to move here uh, so if I go three inches back I'm going to be moving to about here so that really doesn't leave me a lot of uh, of oil pan so I'm probably gonna need to make a full custom oil pan and maybe move it up towards the front a little bit um, so yeah uh, I think next is just gonna to take it out take the oil pan off and put it back in uh, maybe just I think I might just cut the oil, that oil pan to figure it out anyway it's just a MK412 valve oil pan so not really expensive um, for the motor mounts uh, here uh, so we have the mounting holes here so I think I'm just going to be doing a bracket coming from here, angled down to the OEM uh, motor mount placement that is here. Uh, I could just do new mounting position further towards the front, uh, but I really want to try and keep as much as the OEM E30 parts as possible. So that way, if any of you guys are interested in doing this swap, that uh, we can just get a kit together and get it swapped as easy as possible without touching the actual E30. Because yes, it's VR6 that's going in right now, gonna be turbo, but I plan on keeping this car for a really long while and doing a lot of projects with it. So it's VR6 for now. Once that's done and I push it to what it can go might try something else don't know yet but we'll see uh, for this side here uh, have the oil filter housing uh, for sure that's going to need to be moved uh, because I'm right into the lines I don't know if you can see uh, for the power steering pump uh, at first I might not run one so I might just block those off um, but I'm thinking probably do a block off plate here uh, and feed the oil from the oil cooler instead just pass two lines and run a remote remote oil cooler uh, oil filter sorry somewhere else um, so for the engine mount on this side either I can do what most people do on a rear wheel drive VR6 swap and just bolt it on to the oil filter housing but it's really just three uh, M6 or M8 bolts, a little bit small. Uh, what I was thinking is probably use the OEM uh, accessory bracket holes uh, and just so my mounting would be similar to the spot on the right side and go down here. I'm probably not going to be running, like I said, the power steering anyway. If I am, I'll probably look into an electric one or maybe relocate it a little bit higher and probably run a mini alternator uh, on this setup. 
So another thing you can see is the massive gap in front. So that's one of the good thing of, of the swap. Uh, trying to get the weight bias uh, towards the back of the car. Uh, like I said, I still have a three inch to go back. So that should give a lot of room. Uh, I might be doing a water to air intercooler maybe in front here. Uh, that's going to be in the future for now. It's really just putting in the stock 12 valve, getting it running. And then I just want to upgrade one thing at a time, trying to keep it as stock as possible to start. And then go out the drag strip, make some passes, get some logs and then go step by step with you guys uh, probably going to start with cams intake and trying to do one at a time and really go see real life at the track uh, see what we can win with that and try to get a more reliable uh, horsepower gain uh, because I know these VR6 and NA form aren't the most powerful engines uh, but I just want to see what those upgrades actually give in real life and then once that's done, then we go turbo and have a lot more fun. Uh, so that's it for now. Just going to take the engine out and then uh, start cutting up the oil pan so I can actually put it back in to exactly where it belongs uh, further back in so I can measure out, do my mounts and all that stuff. So let's get her out. Okay, so time for another update. So the pan is off. We have a big pump and pickup. Um, it's pretty much in the center of the engine. Uh, I need to go about 14 inches from the rear uh, of the engine. So that means I have to move up about 7 inches. So that's a lot. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just start by taking it out. I'm going to check how the shaft is done and if there's a way for me to maybe uh, fabricate the actual pickup part here to move it and see what I can do. Or I think there's a certain model of 3.2 uh, that the pickup is about an inch shorter so that would probably help. Also, so let's get that unbolted. Okay, so the oil pump is out uh, with strainer. So you have the pickup with the strainer here and then you have your feed line that goes to push the oil in the engine. So, and you have an output shaft here, well input shaft actually that goes up and this is what uh, actions the pump. So what I think I'm going to try to do, since I can't really move this because of the shaft, I'm going to leave that there. And I think what I'm going to do is try to take off the cap here. And then maybe I can fab up a plate with a pickup tube that's going to go a little bit straighter. Then come down. It depends how much room I need to get because I know that I can use a R32 MK5 pickup. It's supposed to be an inch shorter and it works on any VR6 except 3.6. So maybe if I get that that's an inch shorter maybe I can have enough room. So what I'm going to need to do is actually put the engine back without uh, this and without uh, the pan. I'm going to measure how much clearance I have underneath and then I can see if this is high enough uh, or if the other model is better and if it doesn't work we'll make it work. We'll fab something uh, to get it and worst case scenario I uh, can't find anything, dry sump. So uh, let's uh, put the engine back in the car and measure up how much room I have before 
taking all this apart. Okay, so the engine is back in without the oil pump. Uh, I tried to position it as close as I can. The trans is not there, but I measured the length of the trans. Um, so now, height-wise, I'm under the hood line. Uh, might not fit the hood, that's other question. Uh, at least it's closer than it was. Uh, the front and back, uh, a lot of room, I'm good. Uh, might even need to go with a thicker adapter plate just to move everything forward a little bit because uh, oil pan is going to be really tight. Uh, so I don't know if we can see, maybe if I take off the light, this, okay. Uh, so you have the subframe that finishes pretty far right here and steering. So I have about six inches in the front of the block that I can put a mini oil pan there. So that's going to be tough. And Right now I have about two inches underneath, probably won't be able to see, but anyway, I have like two inches right now, so that's really close. Um, so I'm definitely going to need to do a custom pickup uh, because the stock one has about six inches. So even the R32 are at five, so I'm still three inches taller. So that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna need to disassemble the stock pump and uh, start figuring out how to do a custom pickup to really go to the front of the block. Uh, I'll be good with just the pump part if I take out the strainer. So that's gonna be the next step. So in the next videos, uh, it's going to be more fabrication of the missing parts and trying to finish the actual installation of the motor in the car. And then once that's done, I'm going to take everything apart, give everything a good cleaning, rebuild the engine, so new timing chain, uh, all new gaskets, just give it a good overall. And then it's going to be final assembly in the car. And then get exhaust, fueling, wiring. So of course if you want to follow the build, just hit that subscribe button. And you'll get updated videos as the project goes along. So thanks for watching.